we from here we just complete the first aspect of what has to be done daily for a ventilated patient next we come to the most confusing topic and for a beginner i mean a scalar and graphics is always a problem we always shy away from uh, going into the graphics i'll try to make it as simple as possible so in ventilator graphics we have two uh, items one is called a scalar and one is called a loop so first you have to understand how a ventilator gives breath so the ventilator gives a breath as a flow this air keeps flowing inside it so the flow can generate either a pressure or a volume so based on that there are two modes either it is a pressure based mode or a volume based mode so we have three scalars <coughs> flow time scalar so scalar is you comparing one variable with respect to time suppose you compare flow with respect to time it becomes a flow time scalar suppose you compare pressure with respect to time it becomes a pressure time scalar the third parameter which is probably not seen here if you compare volume with respect to time it becomes a volume time scalar so next is loop loop is comparing the components of scalars with each other suppose you compare pressure with volume it becomes a pressure volume loop when you compare flow with volume it becomes a flow volume loop so this is a ventilator graphics which has <coughs> volume mode pressure mode here so i'll tell you how to identify the scalars there are three scalars which i mentioned here first thing to identify is which scalar has a negative deflection so here if you can see this is the scalar which has a positive deflection here and a negative deflection and remember the only scalar which has a negative deflection is called flow time scalar none of the other scalars will have negative deflection so if you find negative deflection in any scalar then you are sure that it is flow time scalar so one you have identified the next is whichever looks like a mountain is called volume time scalar so you can see this is looking like a mountain mountain so this becomes volume time scalar okay so mountain is volume time which has a negative deflection is flow time so two steps over next we come on to the modes in pressure control mode how the breath is delivered you set a pressure and you expect a tidal volume to be seen in the ventilator so the pressure is the constant variable here so when you go to pressure time scalar you have already set a pressure for example you have set a pressure of 10 so the ventilator will give a pressure of 10 and maintain the same 10 of pressure till the duration of inspiration and go into expiration so you see like this rectangle or square wave forms always this is called constant wave form in pressure control mode so if you see a constant wave form in pressure control mode <coughs> this becomes pressure time scalar in pressure control in volume control you set flow which is the constant variable so if flow is appearing constant or in the square wave form it becomes volume control mode so just to explain again if the pressure wave form i mean if you see in the pressure time scalar the pressure is constant here so that means it becomes a pressure control mode in volume control volume mode the flow is constant because the flow is constant you can see a square wave form here and this becomes volume control mode so last graph which is pending is pressure time scalar in a volume mode here what happens you set the volume tidal volume suppose i want a 100 ml tidal volume to be reached so what happens ventilator will give a flow so this flow starts increasing the pressure till the appropriate tidal volume 100 ml is reached once the 100 ml is reached there is a pause which is given so during this pause the pressure drops and the pressure on the tidal volume equilibrates between all the alveoli so that's why you give a peak and it sort of plateaus and then it goes to expiration so this i'll again explain you in the subsequent slides so again if you can see here which has a negative deflection so it is a flow time graphic and the flow is constant here 
so in volume mode the flow is always constant so this becomes a flow time scalar in a volume control mode <coughs> so if you see this graph this again has a negative deflection so that makes it a flow time scalar so if you see the flow here is decelerating flow so decelerating flow always means pressure control mode so constant flow in a flow time scalar means volume control mode decelerating flow means pressure control mode <coughs> So in the same again negative deflection this is a flow time scalar constant flow so this is a volume control mode so this is inspiration and this is expiration so the first flow increases and reaches a maximum this is called peak inspiratory flow and once the i time is inspiratory time is over it goes into expiration and the expiration here again the maximum point is called peak expiratory flow and once the expiratory time is over the cycle is completed and the next breath starts here you can see the inspiratory flow is square waveform the expiration is here the normal expiration should get over here but here you can see the expiration is taken longer time to reach the baseline before which the next breath has started so that means there is some problem with expiration the problem with expiration can be seen in like conditions like asthma where there is bronchial i mean bronchial obstruction airway obstruction or copd where the air flow expiration air flow is limited so it is taking a longer time to reach the baseline and you can see a little bit of scooping here and there is some peep which is extra generated here which is pressure which is still there is some amount of air which is still remaining in the alveoli that alveoli is staying at the end of expiration so that is called positive end expiratory pressure because it is automatically generated at the end of expiration it becomes auto peep so this air trapping which is seen at the end of expiration is called auto peep so next again here you can see the peak expiratory flow is small it should be like this actually and it is taking longer time to reach the baseline so what you do because there is bronchospasm you give a nebulization post nebulization you see the peak expiratory flow has increased and the expiratory time has come down okay and then covid scenarios we are generally uh, refraining from giving nebulization we for most patients we end up giving only metadose inhalers even for uh, sick patients mdi works very well metadose inhalers so next is a pressure waveform so in pressure control mode the pressure waveform will appear as a square form because the pressure is the constant variable as i already discussed in volume control mode it will differ different it has a peak and it has a plateau so we'll discuss that in the next slide okay so before that here if you can see this is a, a pressure waveform this is in a controlled mode so control mode breaths are always positive pressure breaths spontaneous breaths or spontaneous breathing is negative pressure so in inspiration you have a negative deflection and in expiration you have a positive deflection so this breath is called this is a control breath this is a assisted breath so what is the difference between assisted breath and control breath is the patient is making the effort here is triggering the ventilator but the ventilator is supporting him with this respiratory effort so if he takes an effort the ventilator will reward him with a breath but in spontaneous everything has to be done by the patient the ventilator will just partly support him but in control breaths the ventilator will completely give all the breaths in assist breaths the patient just has to trigger the ventilator the rest will all be given by the ventilator himself so again if you see here this is a pressure time scalar in volume control mode so as a tidal first as the air flows in you get a peak pressure so once the peak pressure is reached air has entered into the alveoli the peak pressure is the sum of like the pressure which has to go through the airway and reach the alveoli once it is reached here you can see there is a pause which has been applied because this is the time for inspiration so during the inspiration all the air inside the lungs sort of gets uh, distributed into the entire alveoli and there is a pressure drop this is called plateau pressure so the peak pressure sort of determines the entire pressure both for the airway resistance and for the alveoli 
the plateau pressure will tell you how much of the pressure is in the alveoli so that is important for the lungs whether how much the lung is expanding whether it is compliant lung or non compliant here you can see the same graph uh, always remember for example uh, this is a peak pressure of 20 and after the pause there is a plateau pressure which is 15 the normal difference between the peak to plateau is 3 to 5 so what it indicates is out of the 20 pressure which has been seen in the lungs 15 has been contributed by the plateau pressure which indirectly means the alveoli so that means the patient has a pneumonia that complaints problem is the one which is causing for the high peak pressures here you can see the peak pressure has gone up normal is 20 this is an example okay so from 20 it has gone up to 30 so but if you see the plateau pressure contribution is only 20 normal difference between the peak and the plateau is 3 to 5 the gradient is more here so that means the 30 increase is predominantly contributed by the airway resistance and not by the alveoli so which means there is some problem in the airways it may be secretions it may be tube kinking it may be asthma which is a problem in the airways and it is not a alveolar problem in the next slide here you can see again the peak pressure is high but in this the peak pressure contribution of 30 out of it 20 is by the alveoli the plateau itself is 25 here and the gradient is maintained so out of the 30 25 of pressure is contributed by the p plateau which is your alveolar pressure and which indirectly indicates a compliance of the lung so that indicates a poorly compliant lung so the causes of poorly compliant lung are it may be either severe pneumonia maybe conditions like ards where there is a alveolar problem or it can even be pulmonary edema where there is edema in the alveoli so i made a simple table for you to understand so this is a p peak pressure this is a plateau pressure and this is a gradient and what is the interpretation assuming 20 of the peak pressure to be normal your plateau pressure suppose is 15 which indicates the compliance of the lung the normal gradient is 3 to 5 the gradient is 5 here and which is normal here suppose your peak pressure is increased to 30 and the contribution of plateau pressure is 25 and the gradient is maintained here so out of the 30 peak pressure 25 is given by the compliance which is your alveoli okay so because alveolar problem is there this is the main problem so which is indicating that poor compliance is the reason why the plateau pressure is peak pressure has gone up in the final scenario if you see the peak pressure is 30 the compliance is the plateau pressure is 20 the gradient is gone up by 10 so that means the increase in peak pressure is not much because of the compliance it is because of airway resistance i hope it is clear for you guys so next is the easiest way form volume way form so as you see whichever looks like a mountain that is called volume time scalar so this is the inspiratory time this is the expiratory time and you see the volume here so this here you can get the amount of tidal volume which has been delivered